I'm John Scott. I'm with you, John. See, we're almost there. Almost. We're almost there. It's Friday, everybody. We're glad you're with us. I'm Jenna Lee, and it's been a really busy week, especially when it comes to what we're dealing with with Iran. Uh, diplomats are now saying today that U.N. inspectors have found higher traces of uranium at the Fordo and Richmond plant. It could mean, it could mean the country is closer to producing nuclear weapons. The traces, though, are said to be enriched up to 27 percent. That's still well below the level needed, but it is causing some concern. It's more than Iran's highest known enrichment grade, which is close to 20 percent. So as that moves up, people get more concerned about Iran's potential nuclear capabilities. Michael Singh is with us. He's former senior director of Middle Eastern Affairs, the National Security Council. He's currently the managing director of the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. So, Michael, it has been quite a week. There's been a lot of news about Iran. We've had talks in Baghdad. Give us a progress report. Has there been progress made? Well, really no, Jenna, not from the perspective of the P5 plus one. Uh, there's no agreement coming out of Baghdad. All we've got, frankly, is a, another meeting happening in Moscow in the middle of June. Um, and so the can gets kicked down the road. I think, though, that what this discovery today points to is that there has been some progress from Iran's point of view. Um, the discussions that took place in Baghdad focused on Iran's 20 percent enrichment. So, in other words, not its full enrichment program, not all of its nuclear activities, but just at sort of highest grade nuclear activities. And now we see they're pushing even beyond that. So it seems that Iran is following a strategy of sort of the, the frog in the boiling pot of water, you know, getting the West to sort of gradually accept more and more nuclear capability in Iran uh, while they frankly don't give up much. So what do we do? Well, I think what we need to do is uh, we need to change in a sense the dynamic in these negotiations. And instead of sort of offering Iran this incentive or that incentive in exchange for sort of some modest concessions on their nuclear program, Iran really needs to feel as though their choice is either give up their nuclear weapons program or face very severe penalties, perhaps even including uh, military action or even tougher sanctions on their oil sector. I don't think they have that feeling right now. Uh, and, you know, we have to sort of accept at some point, Jenna, we're not going to charm them into giving this up. You know, they have said repeatedly and consistently, Michael, that they are going to continue with their nuclear program. It, 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 despite anything that's being offered, and, and we can get to what's being offered, um, despite any of the sanctions, they've been very consistent that this is what they're going to do. So at this point, is there anything we can offer besides an armed conflict, besides war, that's going to convince them of otherwise? And would even an armed conflict do that? Or would it just create more violence and more energy to, towards this nuclear program? Well, John, I think we need to realize that for the Iranians, this nuclear weapons program is strategically vital. Uh, they've been pursuing it now for many years. They've invested quite a bit of money in it, and they've, they've endured quite a few sanctions as a result of having this program. So in terms of what we are asking them to, to give up, this is something very important. And just the kind of modest incentives that we're offering them at these negotiations are unlikely to sway them. Should we offer uh, because more? It's a, I mean, what could we offer? I think, Jenna, this is about the survival of the regime in their, in their mind, in, the, in Tehran's mind, this nuclear weapons program. So really what I think we have to do is say, look, you know, if you keep going down this road, then that, that in itself, the nuclear work in itself, will threaten the regime because we will threaten military action. We will threaten even more comprehensive sanctions. Uh, and we, we're not doing that right now, I think, in the way that we need to. Just a real quick final thought. Where do you think Israel is in all of this, as far as being close, as some have speculated, to striking Iran and its, and its nuclear facilities? Do you think we're closer to that now, based on the talks? Do you think we're farther away? What's your assessment of that? I think we're probably closer. You know, it's hard for Israel, I think, to strike while the negotiations are going on. Uh, but Israel, I think, is not happy with the fact that the talks did not result in any kind of agreement, but they're also unhappy with the negotiating strategy taken by the United States and, and the P5 plus one, that we're only demanding a halt to the 20 percent enrichment. And now we see that Iran is even going beyond that. Now, I wonder if we change that number eventually, as, as we have changed what we've wanted from Iran. And they've, again, been very consistent about what they want to do. Michael, it's nice to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna.